Hey everyone, how you doing today? Here with uh, part one of a knife review. I wanted to just do this all in one uh, knife review all together, but unfortunately my luck is really not doing so good lately and I got a couple lemons from Zero Tolerance, which is surprising because uh, everything I've gotten from them thus far has been really exceptional. Which was why I was so excited to get these. So a little bit of a disappointment, but hey, you know what? Uh, it happens. And um, after I go over, uh, you know, what I experienced, I will definitely do a part two to really get into my overall take on these knives, as well as the service that Zero Tolerance provided with assisting in getting these problems resolved. So uh, basically, we're looking at knives, two knives here um, that are basically spin-offs of the original 0454. If you're not familiar with it, it has a composite blade, it's a larger blade, and it's it's really <clears throat> a, a really good design. Um, there's the designer's name right there, Sinkovich. And uh, I believe he's uh, Russian. And so that's the two we're looking at right now. So this, the one on top there is the American market version or variation. It's the lowest end of the three as far as price and materials and design. It's the 0452 carbon fiber. Okay. Then the one below it is the 0454 204P, which is referring to the steel they use. And that's what I mean by design and um, materials used on the American version is reflecting the price point. I think it's going for $240 for that knife. The one below here, one you can't even get in the US, I ordered it from Russia, and it's only for the Russian market and it's about $500, $510 actually. So it's you know more than double the cost and is it worth it? Well, we'll get into that. Probably in part two though because I'm really just going to focus on the problems that I ran into, unfortunately. So, just initially the the first one here, the American version. All right. So I obviously packaged this back up because uh, otherwise I wouldn't know I had a problem. I've I carried this, like all my knife reviews, or almost all of them, 90% of them, I really test my knives. I don't just do a, you know, hey, this is an advertisement, look at this knife, I have nothing to tell you besides, I think it's pretty, the knife company's cool, this is what it costs, and here's the specs. I'd rather not be, a, you know, just a commercial for you. I'd rather tell you, this knife's great because I carried it, I used it, this is what I noticed that's good and bad. And unfortunately, um, I'm going to hold off on all the good, just tell you the specs and tell you about the bad that I experienced and hopefully I can come back to you around two and say hey they fixed it this thing's awesome now um, but as you can see it's flat in design they use carbon fiber and a titanium handle on this side scale it's a frame lock steel lock bar insert has a couple different variations that you'll get the pivot pin in I've seen it where if you look at this here there's it looks like a like a race wheel, like a racing wheel on a race car or something. I like it. I think it looks cool. And the other ones look like that too, but the actual uh, edge of it is polished as well. A lot of the other ones you'll see don't have it polished like that. It's just the five-spoke wheel going all the way to the outside. There isn't that polished rim. But I like it either way. They both look really nice. Ties into the carbon fiber nicely. You have the jimping, both spots there. Now this overall weight weighs, it is 9.27 inches when opened. It's a very large, narrow knife. The blade is 4.1 inches. They're using on this model, let's see if I can get this to zoom in a little bit, CPM S35 VN blade steel, very good blade steel. Okay. This is um, only a half inch thick, 0.5 inches, very thin, and 4.3 ounces in weight. So for its size, it has a very, very light weight. It's very nicely done in that regard. 
ball bearings in the pivot system deploys very quickly okay so like I said I'm not gonna get into a lot of the details here I just want to tell you the problem that I'm having I've noticed that a lot of the more recent knives from Zero Tolerance have been having later lockup and I don't like it normally I'm just like whatever and not the end of the world in this case it was the end of the world for this knife so I was packing up to move to North Carolina which I'm here now yay and guess what I'm cutting boxes and just from cutting boxes I don't have kung fu grip or anything I was just gripping this knife and cutting boxes and the blade the lock bar just for me squeezing it there and, and pushing a little bit with my finger pushed all the way over as far as you're seeing it now and then some it actually did um, let's see if I can get it to do it all the way yep there we go I just pushed a little bit there guys and if you can see this clearly it is actually touching the carbon fiber scale on the other side that's a hundred percent lock up and in my opinion and anybody who knows anything about knives that's a failure of the lock this knife is not functional now, as a fixed blade it is, so if you want to put it in a sheath at this point, that's wonderful. <laughs> I'm kind of being sarcastic. But the thing is, is when this happened the first time, I couldn't even disengage the lock bar, and I don't know if I can now. I had to get a, a screwdriver to pry the damn thing apart. And you know, that's just, that's not like zero tolerance. They know better. Nobody can argue, and, and nobody who knows anything about knives can argue that this is, you know, see I had to use a, a uh, star wrench to pry this thing open. So that's a failure, you know, that's just not going to work, that's not going to cut it. That's something that you guys need to know to do. If you're not doing this with your frame lock knives, first of all, when you get them, okay, if you care about dependability, reliability, the life of your knife, being able to count on it, if you want to just put this in your pocket and just open envelopes and you don't really care if it's really going to be dependable if you want to cut, cut cardboard, and for crying out loud, it's cardboard I'm cutting. I'm not talking about cutting carpet, wood, where you're really gripping down. I'm just cutting cardboard here, and this happened. So if you don't care about any of that, then don't worry about it, but I think most of you will. Do yourself a favor. When you deploy the blade and the frame lock is underneath the blade tang, first thing you do is you just grip it okay grip it and squeeze as hard as you can as hard as you can to squeeze the thing your index finger is going to be applying a lot of pressure on the frame lock by doing that and when you do that you'll see that oh wow in this case it shifted over that's about as far as lockup goes that's about 75 percent lockup and what's what's there to, to notice about that well when I deploy the blade, where's the, lo the lockup at? Oh, it's definitely not 70%. This is at 50%. So it's going another 25% just by me squeezing on it. And then take your thumb, or whatever you want to put in there, and really press. And if it pushes all the way over, you have a bad design, a flawed design. There's a problem with your knife. Just putting it simply. So, you know, there's a few things that could be causing this. You know, there's really no sense of speculating. It's just simply a problem. So, you know, it's, it's really unfortunate. Uh, it could be just a, a problem with tolerances. I mean, I haven't done anything to this at all. I just pulled it out of the box and carried it. And that's how I do everything with all of my knives when I first pull them out. So that way I can give you a, you know, an accurate, comprehensive review. I can actually say, you know, this is what I experienced with this knife out of box. The same thing you're going to experience. And I only say that because a lot of times I modify knives too. So I would be surprised if there's a lot of other people out there that encountered this. I probably just got a lemon. And I say that because I am a zero tolerance fan. They, the reason why, they do a good job at what they do. They produce excellent knives with 
you know, really nice designs and collaborations, use really good materials, and the Zero Tolerance is not just a name, it's actually how they, they actually manufacture most of their knives. So it's just really discouraging though when you not only get, you know, one high-end knife from Zero Tolerance who's normally just stellar at ensuring you have a quality product with excellent fit and finish, but, but two of them, which is, I'm going to show you the other one, two of them, two for two are a dud, and two different problems, so, you know, stick with me, I'm not going to just show you the same thing twice. So that's the problem with the one, that the lock is a complete failure. Uh, the good news is, it's not going to fail and slice your finger off, it's filling in the other way, it's, if you want to use this thing, it's going to turn into a fixed blade, because you're not going to be able to disengage the lock bar, unless you feel like prying it, um, prying it open every time to, to close the knife. So that is a big problem. The, obviously. So the other one here, which I was really excited about, this one, I can't wait to get this fixed because I love this knife. This variation is not just a different blade steel. It's not just more exclusive and more expensive it's, it's a lot of things, and I can't wait to show you. So first of all, I ordered it from Custom Knife Factory, because they're awesome. I'm a big fan of Mike and those guys over there. And every time they send anything from Russia to me, and to anybody, I'm sure, they send, they, they now include some postage, which is neat, just a little bit of culture for you, and a chocolate. <laughs> I don't know really know how to say chocolate in, in Russia or mosaic in Russian, but uh, that's how you spell it. Good luck saying that. But yeah, kind of cool. So just a little bit of garb. Okay, so now we're looking at this variation here. Get that out of the way. So isn't that beautiful? Oh, yeah. So this is more of the middle of the line, 500 bucks. Um, the other one is right on the same price point, but now if you're going to buy it, when I see the other one, I mean this, the, the original one. If you're going to find it on the secondary market, it's going to cost you over $1,000, which is just stupid, if you, ask, if you ask me. Nobody did. I'm just giving you my opinion. So there's actually quite a bit of a difference between the two. Uh, all the specs are the same as far as dimensions go, okay? Besides thickness, this is a little thicker. Um, differences, you can see this one's flow through, this one has a backspacer like the original 454 does. Has a different pocket clip, which I like better. And it has the same pivot pin that the original 454 had. Except I think it was like really polished up on the original 454. So it has G10, which I prefer because I'm sick of seeing carbon fiber on every damn knife that I see now. Just my opinion. Just tired of it. It's on everything. So I love the G10. It's actually got a little bit more texture. It's got these lines, grooves, striations, whatever you want to call it. Let's see if I can really get you to see that. And it mimics the same sort of milling done on the titanium here. And it's actually contoured all the way. These handles curve all the way from edge to edge. Making it a little thicker, but way more comfortable in hand. It feels amazing in your hand. Not that this one's uh, uh, uncomfortable in your hand. It's just, it's just noticeably more hand-filling and comfortable, but doesn't... Uh, sacrifice any comfort in the pocket. Titanium backspacer, titanium, um, I believe this is a titanium pocket clip, maybe not, but and, and a titanium scale here. Okay, everything else is the same design wise, you know, lanyard hole, two screws back here, they just use them to lock in this backspacer instead of those two pillars there. And it actually has a little bit better action. Not that they're using different bearings. I don't think they are. I think the detent is just a little bit smoother. It still flies out. It's just a little easier to deploy. And the huge improvement, whew, check this out. 
204 P steel on that bad boy. So that's pretty much the equivalent to like an M390, which if you're not familiar with, that's an amazing steel. And I don't use that word lightly. It's, it, it is an amazing steel. So anyway, this knife I was so stoked for. I really, you know, no matter what I do, no matter how much this goes up in value, I'm not selling the thing. I love it. I'm not getting rid of it. Unless, of course, Zero Tolerance doesn't fix this, but I can't imagine that they wouldn't fix this because this is a huge problem as well. All right, so let me get right to the, the problem that we have here. I'm flipping this. I'm now, I've, I got this one first, so I'm really paranoid about the lockup. And I'm like, oh, okay, the lockup's nice on this one. It's about 30%, which is the sweet spot. I love it at 30%. That's where I want it. I don't know if it's really picking that up well with the lighting in here, but it's at 30%. And when I squeeze on this thing, that same test I was just telling you about, when I squeeze and I push on it, it shifts over to about 45% which is acceptable. It, and you know what? I don't think I clarified that earlier. When you do that test on your frame lock that I was suggesting you do, it's okay if it shifts a little bit. It's most likely going to shift a little bit in most cases. That Garza knife that I got from Custom Knife Factory does not shift like at all. Maybe a couple, two, three percentages of movement out of 100 all the way over to the right. It barely moves, which is exceptional and rare. But it doesn't have to be like that. It can shift as long as it's shifting to a percentage of lockup, to a degree of lockup that is acceptable. And in my opinion, I can't have a knife that's going all the way, of course, obviously, all the way over to the right like the other one did. That's a huge problem. But this shifted over to about 45, 50%. It's got a steel lock bar insert, which means it's steel to steel contact, which means it's going to wear a lot better than titanium to steel. Much better. I won't even buy titanium to steel for that reason. And most people don't even make it like that anymore because it doesn't wear very well. Your lock won't last very long. So I'm not too worried if I push this over and it stops at 50%. I'm okay. I know it's not going to be moving much further if at all. So I know that I'm good to go. And that's the case here. So the long... And short of it all is this lock engagement is perfect. It's great. I love it. No problems there. The problem is when it's closed, surprisingly enough. So when I disengage this, okay, what happens is, and I didn't even know this, I was showing my buddy at work this knife. And I pull it out of my pocket. I'm like, check this out. And he's like, oh, this one. And he's not a knife guy. Yeah, a lot of my friends that I'm showing my knives to work aren't knife guys. They're kind of getting into it because I keep doing show and tell all the time but they're just learning how to flip knives and so he was flipping this other one and it's easy to flip you don't have to really know you know knives very well to deploy the blade so he was flipping this one the day before and I said this one is the one man this is awesome check this out so he reaches out to flip it and listen to this hear that little click I'll get I'll get to that in a minute he reaches out to flip it and he's really trying and he can't he can't deploy the blade and I'm thinking, come on, man. I didn't say that, but I'm thinking, what's, what's your deal, dude? Like, I know you're not a knife guy and everything, but it's got a little tab there. You flipped, like, 20 of my other flipping knives. Why can't you flip this one? I'm like, he, he's kind of feeling stupid, too. He's like, uh, I, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong. Here you go. He hands it to me, and I'm kind of thinking, like, oh, yeah, I'll show you. And I'm like, what the hell? What happened? I'm kind of freaking out now. I'm like, I'm looking at the blade everything centered like nothing's bound up like it didn't overextend there I don't know what's going on here I'm kind of in a panic so the uh, the problem is is that they fudged the detent not the detent ball but the detent on the blade they put two levels in it and what happens is is when this was in my pocket and I sat down it put pressure the actual denim of the jean pocket put pressure against the outside of this knife. And what it did was, is because there's this um, error with manufacturing from zero tolerance with this knife, and they put that deeper level of the, the detent, the detent ball went into the deeper level, clicks in, and locks the blade closed. Yeah. <laughs> so if you listen and watch, I'll try to catch this. I'm actually going to pull this lock bar out of the deeper level of the detent that the detent ball stuck in, preventing me from being able to deploy the blade. And if you watch and listen, you might hear or see it, but let me shut up now so you can see this. 
Okay, let me do that again. So first of all, you can it's a lot more audible. You can hear when the lock bar goes further down. Listen. Okay, that's me just putting a little bit of pressure there. The detent ball falls in too deep. Cannot deploy it no matter how hard I push now. It's impossible. And let me pull it back out. Okay, so you may have seen the lock bar move, it does, and you may have actually heard that click that time, it was a little louder. So now, no problem again. <laughs> I can't freaking believe it. I've never seen anything like it. But I did notice the detents, the, the difference between the 0452 carbon fiber, which is not having this problem, and the 0454 204p version. So let me see if I can get this in here. So first, if you look at the detent hole there, there's only one level. So really make sure you're seeing that. There's only one level there. Okay, so If you compare it to this one, there's two holes in there. And that's what's happening. When, when this knife closes, when the blade closes, the detent, you'll see the, the, uh, the detent right in between that opening there. The detent has one level, so when that detent ball falls into it, that's it. There's no other place for it to go. I can push on this lock bar all I want, and I'm still going to be okay. I'm going to be able to deploy the blade just fine. Not the case with this one, because they have the second level there. And that's what's causing all the problems. You have the same sort of thing, um, detent, that the other one has that I just showed you, and then a secondary, deeper and smaller hole that's been drilled. And that is what the detent ball is falling into when I put pressure right here. And then it's just bound. You can't, you can't uh, get the blade open anymore. So, man, what a disappointment because that happens pretty much every time I put it in my pants and if I sit down or something and then I pull the knife out, every time I have to pull that out to deploy the blade. So, you know, crazy. <laughs> I can't believe it. Two for two and zero tolerance rocks. I can't comment on their customer service yet. Uh, you know, this is the sort of thing that they just have to fix. These knives are not functional. They're complete lemons, in my opinion, and I think anybody's opinion. And they 100% need to fix this. They need to, to make this, this right. Everything else needs to be right. And everything else is great on this. The blade centering was pretty good. It shifted a little bit on this one. I had to straighten it out. Uh, this this is good. The lockups are, are great, except for the, <laughs> the problem there. The, the the They're very sharp. Fit and finish otherwise is very good. These problems just suck. <laughs> I can't have these knives. I can't even own them like this. They're terrible. So I'm looking forward to doing a second follow-up where I'll probably get a lot more into my thoughts on the design of the knife, the fit and feel, what role it falls into, you know, the, the, all the stuff I normally go over, some comparisons, some talk about pricing. I'm going to go over all the normal stuff I, I go over second time around. But I want to hold off. I want to give Zero Tolerance a chance to make things right. I also want everybody else to do two things. One, I want them to be informed about zero tolerance may produce a good knife, but what if you have a problem? Are they going to square you away in that regard? Because what's the point of buying something that's usually done right? If you do get unlucky and have a dud, like I've gotten two for two here, and then you can't get it squared away. There's no chance in hell anybody who's intelligent is going to be buying anything from any manufacturer that, that operates like that. Oh man, I hope this is okay because if it's not, I'm screwed. No, that's not going to work. Now, I am not implying that Zero Tolerance is going to work like that. I actually expect just the opposite. I think that their, their company is doing something right. I've worked with Kershaw before. Uh, I know that everybody's you know underneath the Kai tier 
or Kai company. And so I'm just going to have to assume that they're going to do well, just like Kershaw has done well. I'm going to assume that their customer service is awesome. They're going to say, no problem, send them in. I'm going to get two more back that are just perfect. And that's going to be the end of the story. So that's what I'm really hoping you all are going to be um, uh, finding out happens when I, when I send this in. Additionally, what I want to have happen is I want you all to let me know if you've had any problems with these either of these particular knives and what the problems were. I don't anticipate hearing much, to be honest with you. The fit and finish, the quality, the tolerance of Zero Tolerance is usually exceptional, and that's why I'm such a fan of them. So I do want to know, though, maybe they're having problems. And I hope that's not the case. I doubt that's the case. But if it is, I would like to know, and I think that would be a good indication uh, if that is the case, if all of a sudden there's a huge response to this and a lot of people are saying, yeah, man, I got one and I had this problem or I, I had the same problem as you, then it might be an actual quality control issue. And I think zero tolerance would be uh, appreciative of that information too. So, because honestly, when I contact them, I'm going to reference this video. I'm going to say, check this out. These are the problems I'm having. Please make it right. Because sometimes it's hard to really explain what, what problem you're having. So this video should depict that pretty well. Anyhow, thank you for watching. I'll be back again for round two, and we'll get a lot more into the knives themselves and uh, how Zero Tolerance took care of everything or you know how, how they handled it. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do like it, share, and please do not hesitate to give me some feedback, comments about your experiences with these knives or the video itself. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care.